Now, every January is usually marked as Cervical Cancer Awareness Month. It is an ideal chance for the World Health Organization and partners to raise awareness of cervical cancer and uh, vaccination against human uh, papillomar virus, uh, the main cause of the cervical cancer. This year, Cervical Cancer Awareness Month aims to highlight the importance of increasing access to human papillomar virus, that's uh, HPV vaccines, a regular screening, a state-of-the-art treatment for cervical cancer in its early stages. Now, the shared objective is to dramatically reduce the occurrence of the scourge by 2030 and to eliminate the disease as a public health problem by 2120. Cervical cancer is the sixth most common cancer in women in the WHO Eastern uh, Mediterranean region. Now, in 2020, an estimated uh, 89,800 uh, women were diagnosed with cervical cancer in the region, and more than 47,500 women died from the disease. To share some topics on this ailment at the annual commemoration, we are now being joined by Dr. Fejiro Chinye Mwoko, CEO at the Nigeria Solidarity Support Fund. Good to have you here on Arise. Thank you. Good. Thank you for having me here. Very good. So, what is the current rate of cervical cancer in Nigeria, and why is it important to address this issue, you think? Okay, great. So um, you just talked about the Mediterranean, Eastern Mediterranean statistics. Nigeria's cervical cancer is the second most common cause of, of cancer in women in Nigeria, following the breast cancer. And over 60 million youth girls and women are at risk right now of having cervical cancer. And 80% of these will be women and girls in rural community. It is very important that we get on top of this because we know that the survival rate is, from you, what you've said, it's about 50%, if detected early, if detected late, even worse. And then the financial burden for treatment of cancer is also very high for the average family here in Nigeria. It is strongly linked to HPV as one of the causes because HPV is a sexually transmitted infection and is the commonest sexually transmitted infection in Nigeria not even HIV. So um, human papillomavirus is the, is the most common sexually transmitted infection in Nigeria, but it's also preventable. And so um, now that there is a vaccine for HPV vaccine, it is, it is a call to raise awareness for everyone, every girl and boy. It's not for only the girl child, the vaccine, because even though cervical cancer affects the ladies, the men are also carriers of the, of the virus. So it's a call for a, an awareness to say, can we vaccinate all of these potential girls and women so that they don't come down with the cancer? Other contributing factors are multiple sexual partners, we know early child marriage, um, as we know, and, and poverty, lack of education and all that. But we also know that if we can vaccinate the girl child and the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency has just introduced the HPV vaccine into the national vaccine, um, the vaccine routine, the routine vaccine in Nigeria for the girl child between nine to 14. Mm. And so it's a call to, and it's because we want to prevent them before they become sexually active, before they're prone to this um, in infection. So it's a call for all of us, um, especially um, you, the news to, to advocate for this. Yeah. All right, then. I mean, I, I love the fact that you even mentioned the HPV vaccine because a lot of people don't even know what HPV is. Talk less about, you know, making sure that their um, young girls go out and get those vaccines. So it brings me to your ne to my next question. Can you share some of the initiatives or uh, your non-profit organization has undertaking to raise awareness? Because, it, you know, a problem, say a problem... Uh, have a uh, shed. shed is a problem has. have solved. So can you talk to us about those initiatives that your um, NGO has worked on to create awareness about cervical cancer within um, the vulnerable communities like you've mentioned? Thank you. So we, we took on um, HPV vaccine as the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency decided to roll out the vaccine. And it was very critical that we use the youths as a medium to advocate for HPV. There are just very few people that we can reach on our own, but the youths are digitally 
active, they are on social media platform. And so our NGO engaged the youth through what we call the We Ninja campaign to raise awareness for HPV, for cervical cancer, for the HPV vaccine, and educate people, not just about the vaccine, educate people on what HPV is and what, um, what um, cervical cancer is as well, and who is at risk, because most people feel like it's a women's issue. But the men are also carriers and the, and the vaccines are also for the men. So we had to do that education, but we use the youth. Why? Because the youths between ages 19 to 45, uh, we are a very young population country, so they are over 40% of our population. So we, and they are always on the media, and they are the strongest voice, really. They are advocates for change, if we, if we can call them that. So this campaign um, um, brought youths together from various parts of the country, speaking different languages, um, using different methods of communication, but saying one thing, which is raising awareness for this infection and for the disease as well. And also bringing to light the preventive measures that we now have in country as available for that. We have done um, the We Niger campaign for three years. This um, last year was the um, We Niger campaign Youth Fest, where we also educated the Nigerian youths um, on how to raise awareness to advocate for health costs, especially for the HPV vaccine, and then to advocate that would bring change, not just advocate, advocate to bring change, tell your friends and your families. So that's what we have done so far and what we'll continue to do. All right, uh, Doctor, uh, in creating that awareness, how have you engaged with uh, other groups? Do you engage in partnership and how profitable has it been you know, in terms of uh, getting that objective passed on to uh, the recipient? Yes, we have had a lot of engagement. In fact, um, so many organizations, non-for-profit, for-profit organization, um, joined us, partnered with us for this our last campaign because they were very, it's something that everyone can relate to. Everyone has a sister, a daughter, a friend, that they know that if we, if we can bring about education that can change their behaviors and can change lives, why not? And um, we partnered with NGOs such as Med Medicaid, which, which is, a, is an NGO run by um, the former um, wife of the governor of, of um, Kebi State to advocate for this and she partnered with us in this our we niger campaign we also partnered with for-profit organization who give prizes to the winners a lot of um, for-profit organizations came on board with us to join us give prizes to the winners advocated joined their joined their voices with us we also partnered with the media agency um to to promote the campaign and promote the education the advocacy work and that has been really profitable and so we we know that with partnerships like this we can reach more people okay. we can do that alone we partnered with the government the national primary health care development agency so we are a fund that partners with across several stakeholders and we know that is very relevant for impacts in nigeria okay we do know that um there are well i say uh, bottlenecks or uh, challenges that are faced. And, and there was something that you mentioned, um, child marriage, which still is very rampant in Nigeria you know, in 2024. You know, it's quite a, I can't even, I don't understand why we're still having that. But the reason I'm asking you is outside of, you know, cervical cancer, looking at the causes, uh, the, the social, the cultural, the economical causes, uh, is um, your organization looking to maybe tackle some of those things on the back end as at the same time fighting, um, you know, this uh, cervical cancer that is ravaging, uh, you know, nations okay. across the world? Yeah, so there are various, there are various um, parts of the cycle to change, right? Mm -hmm. So we've started off with um, vaccine advocacy right now. So we are advocating for vaccine and trying to reduce hesitancy. And some of the things you spoke about, cultural beliefs, affect how people respond to a national rollout of vaccines. Some people, we met a lot of resistance in this campaign. Some people believed that it was a tool um, by some foreign organization to reduce the population of Nigeria. There have been all sort of myths and beliefs, and we had to deal with debunking those myths and beliefs. So those are the cultural and social behavior. People just don't trust things that are free, and vaccines are free in Nigeria. 
Yeah. So people are suspicious. People also don't trust the government. So anything that is associated with a government effort, people already feel skeptical about it. And so why we always work with, an, um, with the government is because we want to synergize. We want to bring our private sector and, um, knowledge and our influence even in the, amongst the youth to them. So we are on that track where you're talking about child marriage. We know that it's a country and we need to keep speaking and engaging policy makers to be able to change that. And very, that's very good, Doctor. You, you just made a very uh, valid point. But we will come back to you mm -hmm. after this break. Uh, news day continues shortly. Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching a news day. Now, before that short break, we were still we were talking to Dr. Fejiro Chienwoko, who is the CEO at the Nigeria Solidarity Support Fund. And of course, we were, you know, talking about cervical cancer and the I guess the, the different cycles of fixing that problem. So if you can just pick up. Thank you. So saying that we are already working on the vaccine advocacy, so advocacy, advocating for vaccine uptake and also reducing the myths and beliefs around that leads to vaccine hesitancy in Nigeria. And the important point you brought about the cultural practices of child marriage and, and knowing that it, leads, it can lead to cervical cancer, I said that we know that it's a policy issue and while we already work with various stakeholders, including the policy makers, on tackling advocacy um, for to reduce vaccine hesitancy. We are also in conversations with them on how to really stop this practice for real. We know that um, behavioral change takes time and we'll start, we've started a conversation and we hope that it would eventually get better. Very good, Doctor. I'm particularly interested in this issue of, um, you know, talking specifics now, especially the male, you know, uh, you know folks. Uh, can a man give a woman HPV? And how do we know that uh, they are carriers, you know, Great. in trying to reduce this uh, ailment? Very good question. So it, there is no symptom mm -hmm. to the sexually transmitted infection in most cases. In very few cases, um, people can have genital warts. Very few cases, but in most cases, there are no symptoms, and both sexes can uh, can have the infection. But the, it's a sexually transmitted infection. It's not a female sexually transmitted oh, okay. infection. Right. <laughs> so it's both the male and the female. The issue, issue is we speak to the females because the male can't have cervical cancer mm -hmm. and because they don't have a cervix. The cervix is, is a part of the woman's um, reproductive system, which the man doesn't have. But they are carriers, silent carriers most times. So that's why we say, how do we know? The only way to know is by screening. Okay. Until you go for screening, you may not know that you are a carrier. And so that's why we say both people can go for screening, should go for screening. And if they are negative, both male and female should take the vaccine so that you pre it's preventive. It's not a cure. The vaccine is not a cure for HPV infection. It's preventive for the infection. So both male and female can have the, inf the vaccine. Right now, what the government is giving at and national level free of charge is for girls between ages 9 to 14. So for both sexes and above that age, you may have to get it at a cost at mm -hmm. the hospital. A very fantastic conversation, very important to have. Don't worry, Ani. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Thank you so much for being, for having for being on here. We appreciate your time and, of course, your analysis. And we wish you all the best. Mm -hmm.